In Creo Parametric, you can create ISO lines in ISDX, the style environment. In this video, we'll take a look at how to create them and why you would want to use them. So here I have a model. Let's select one of my style surfaces and then go to edit definition. And if you take a look in the style tree, we have a few different curves in here. I'm using them as internal curves for a surface that is created from a bunch of edge boundaries and those internal curves. If I want to create an isoline, I'll click on the curve from surface command. And here we have the icon that allows us to choose an isoline. And then you can pick a surface. And on that surface, you will get a line created that has the same values for the UV parameterization across that surface. And all your different surfaces, they do have that parameterization that maps to them. If you take a look at the dashboard, you can change the value for that. So right now we have a value of almost 0.5. Let's change it to 0.2. And you can see where it changes where it's located. Let's change to 0.8. And it updates again. And also you can change whether you're going along the U direction or the V direction. So there you can see now the ice line is over here. Let's change this to a value of 0.2 and then you can see where it's end up being generated and then to complete it let's hit the check mark and so there we have an isoline in the model be aware that you can create isolines both on style geometry and surfaces that are created in other different methods for example they could be technical surfaces created from boundary blends or sweeps or swept blends they can be imported geometry whatever kinds of surfaces that you have you can create those different isolines so for example here is a surface from a copy geometry feature let's use the flip button and we're changing it to different variations let me change this to 0.5 so we can see it once again and hit the check mark and it's created so that's how you create an isoline i also want to show some of the different options inside of that command to show you the variations to unclutter the screen let's select this one and then delete it and hit the yes button and get the other one and i will delete it as well so when you go to the curve from surface command in addition to creating an isoline you can create a free curve or a curve on surface and just like a lot of things in isdx it's not just how you create the different entities it's when you go to modify them later on so let's go to the free curve option once again i will left click on a surface and we get our curve on the surface i will hit the check mark and now that is created if i double click on it to make a change to it you can see that we are getting an approximated curve we have a whole bunch of little points on here and you can manipulate any of those you can see that we're no longer going to have an isoline once we make those different changes to it let's repeat that once more let's go to curve from surface but instead of using a free curve i will choose curve on surface and then pick the surface now let's hit the check mark and if i go to edit the definition of this curve by double clicking on it well now we just have a curve on a surface you can see i can grab the different endpoints in order to manipulate them if i click on one of the endpoints i can get the tangent bar and then change the tangency at that location where's my tangent bar there you are and grab it and so here we're just getting a regular curve on a surface but again when you are doing curve from surface and an isoline you are going to get a curve that's going to have that same uv parameterization all along it and so if i click in different locations the entire curve adjusts and again you can change the value and also flip the direction that it's going along the u direction or the v direction let's hit the check mark but again why do you want to use isolines well the reason is, is that you can get better quality of the boundary conditions of the surfaces that you are creating let me go to the other side of the model and this is a cockpit that i am designing and we have a surface here for the canopy 
and we're going to need to have a surface for the rim of the canopy for where this is going to come in contact with the surface of the fuselage. So this is a situation where it would be helpful to create sort of like a ribbon surface between the canopy and the fuselage. And I can do that by using the ice lines. Let's go to curve from surface. We've got the ice line option. I'm going to click on my style surface and let's use the right mouse button to flip it so it's going along the other direction. Here we can see the value along the surface. Hey, let's use a value here. Let's try a value of 0.95, a little high. Let's go to 0.98. There we go. And now I will hit the check mark. Let's create a, another curve from surface where it's going to blend in on this surface. And let's use a value of 0.1 in there. Ah, maybe that's a little too much. Let's try 0.12. There we go. I like that one. And now let's hit the check mark for that one. And in order to get a nicer surface, I want to be able to have a curve on surface over here. So I'm going to use one of the other different methods. So this time I'm going to create a regular curve and we're going to do curve on surface. Let's hold down the shift key and I'll let it snap right into that location. Let's hold the shift key down and then grab onto that location over there hit the check mark and i'm just going to edit this a little bit so that we can get it right exactly where we want it to be and adjust this location over here and i'm just creating this other curve so i can tr trim the amount of this curve i'm using for my surface so let's hit the check mark and now i can create a surface let's create a surface using this curve and then i'll hold down the control key and use this curve and the reason i create this other curve is so i can drag this off of the end there hold down the shift key and let it snap right into the intersection of that curve and if you take a look at our different boundary conditions i can right click on here right now we have a g1 tangent connection but you'll notice that we also have the options for G2 curvature and G3 acceleration. So that would help me with the little rim or the lip that I want to put on the canopy so that when it closes, it forms a seal with the fuselage. So again, that's the advantage of using isolines as part of your surface modeling process. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.